Welcome along everybody to Monza, the historic circuit in northern Italy, ready for the first race of the weekend for the Formula Renault Euro Cup. It's the second weekend of action in the 2018 season and a quick turnaround for the teams and drivers after we're at Paul Ricard at Le Castellet in France just one weekend ago. So back-to-back -back meetings, which will be a feature of the calendar. And we've got a very busy grid of 28 cars all lined up, ready for what will be a 30 minutes plus one lap race. Here you can see just how hot it is at the moment. It's 30 degrees air temperature, even hotter the track temperature when I came to the circuit at eight o'clock this morning it was already 18 degrees qualifying this morning was the very first session of the day between 9 and 9 30 and by that point the temperatures were around about 20 degrees so a good 10 degrees cooler than we've got now uh, the qualifying as was the case at paul ricard was divided into two groups so 14 cars in each group and the first group were much slower than the second group and that was purely because the track was still green from uh, the temperatures coming up and from uh, uh, yesterday's sessions so the fastest time in the first group was set by the championship leader Max Futrell but actually overall he was only the eighth quickest the time getting quicker and quicker through both sessions so in the end it was a an historic pole position for Yifi Yi the Chinese driver who becomes the first ever Chinese driver to line up on pole position in a Formula Renault Euro Cup race he's here with the uh, Joseph Kaufman racing team which have been all conquering for the last two seasons they have won the drivers championship title and if he had a very good start to the season last weekend got on the podium and scored well in both races to run in second place coming into this weekend behind Max Futrell, the former British Formula 4 champion who had a win and a second. He got pole position both times out at Paul Ricard but a clutch issue meant that he uh, had a slightly off colour start in race one and was never able to find a way back past fellow front row starter Logan Sargent, the American driver, another uh, refugee from the British Formula 4 Championship who took his maiden race victory in his first full season of the championship. There is Yifi Yi, the Chinese driver on pole position then and uh, he as well as looking to become a historic first ever Chinese race winner in the championship is of course looking for his maiden victory. Uh, alongside him is one of the four drivers in the traditional yellow and black co colour scheme of Renault, Christian Lungard and Christian going really well this weekend. He is a driver with a good pedigree but he's new to the championship and he along with various other drivers including the championship leader Max Futrell, part of the Renault Sport Academy uh, being backed by Renault uh, in terms of their racing future. It's the second year in this scheme for Christian, son of Henrik. Uh, Lundgaard, the uh, former rallycross expert. There is Max Futrell, the championship leader, who for this one is going to line up on the second row of the grid. And he has got 43 points in the championship after a win and a second last time out. If he has got, if he, he has got 33 points with the two podium finishes that he scored. And Christian Lundgaard is third in the championship standings. Richard Vachort was not well last weekend. He was really ill and it was a tough weekend for him. He did well to get into the car by all accounts, but he's feeling much, much better this weekend. Had a chat with him uh, yesterday. And although he'd had some issues with the brakes on his car during the free practice sessions, they sorted that out for qualifying and he was able to go a second quicker than he was going in the collective test yesterday. Alexander Smoliar is uh, having a very good weekend so far as well. The Russian driver had some issues with his throttle last time out at Paul Ricard, uh, which uh, caused uh, the car to stop out in the practice session yesterday afternoon as well. But that's been rectified, so he starts high up the grid. Lorenzo Colombo uh, had a mixed weekend, I think it's fair to say, at Paul Ricard last time out. He was mighty quick, the Italian. Uh, however, he did also pick up a penalty uh, for a collision with uh, Luis Guzman. So, He's actually qualified higher up than he appears on the grid, but he's got a four-place grid penalty, which has uh, shuffled the grid somewhat. So, as ever, it's the fastest driver from the fastest group that gets pole position, and the fastest driver uh, from the second fastest group runs up next then, but uh, the order has changed because of this four-place grid penalty for everybody behind, for the first few rows at least, everybody behind uh, the pole sitter, Yi. Alex Peroni. Uh, one of uh, several very quick young Italian dri uh, Australian drivers that we've got here in Italy is hoping for a much better weekend. Uh, he and his teammates at MP Motorsports uh, last weekend, Max Stefani having pretty off-colour weekend. Charles Melezzi, the number three car there, might be one to watch. He completes the top ten on the grid. So it's Yeat and Lungard on row one, Futrell and for sure on row two. For sure having a much better qualifying 
than he had last time out when he was ill. He was ninth on the grid for both races there. So he's looking good. And he was confident when I spoke to him that he could go even quicker. He lost time trying to resolve this brake issue in free practice. So he was feeling, feeling very confident as we head off onto the formation lap. And then on the third row of the grid, Alexander Smoliar, the uh, Russian driver, uh, already looking much sharper than he looked in the opening uh, weekend at Port Ricard. Spoke to Alexander yesterday as well. And I asked him, do you, do you bother going back home to Russia in between the two race weekends? Because obviously they finished on Sunday and they're back here. It was a collective test on Thursday, an official test session on Thursday. And he said, no, just went to the, uh, the team headquarters, spent some time with the team and then came straight from France to Italy. But uh, still resides in Russia. He has been here before in the winter test, but obviously with very different conditions. So the cars and the drivers head around this formation lap, just tuning their brains in and their minds in now, getting ready for the start of this race. They've already been in and around the cars for the last hour or so. Doing lots of training, physical exercises to build up their uh, bodies and hand-eye coordination. As we see the grids with the end, Lungard on row one. Futrell, the championship leader, uh, for sure, confirmed on row two of the grid. Smolly up, the best so far this season, and Colombo line up on the third row of the grid. Colombo, the Italian, with lots of home support here. Martins and Piastri, Oscar Piastri, runner-up in last year's British F4 Championship, are on row four. Peroni and Milesi will look to score good points here from the fifth row of the grid. And then we've got De Forney, who has finished in the top four of this championship for a couple of seasons, and Bird, who has gone really well in qualifying seventh and eighth rows you look back then to the eighth row of the grid to find Logan Sargent who was the winner of the opening round last weekend and was looking like he was going to score another podium in race two until when we were behind the safety car he stopped as on track and the reason for that was an engine uh, problem an engine issue for him so uh, real highs and lows for him as we see the rest of the grid there are 28 drivers 14 of them this season are rookies and this is a truly an international championship not just in terms of the circuits and the countries that we visit nine of the rounds this year out of the ten will be held on circuits which are hosting uh, formula one grand prix but also it's international in terms of the driver makeup of the series we have got uh, 28 drivers as i said and they represent 16 different countries so not just drivers from europe but we have five continents represented australasia uh, africa from uh, Morocco, drivers from North and South America and all across Europe getting ready for this race weekend. So the car's making their way towards the end of the lap. It's 5.8 kilometres long. It's a fairly similar length lap-wise in terms of distance to Paul Ricard last time out, but the lap times are around about 15 seconds a lap quicker than we had in France last weekend, and that's because they're full throttle for 78% of the lap here. Uh, the top speeds uh, are pretty astonishing. These drivers are 17, 18, 19 years of age, and they were hitting nearly 250 kilometers an hour down the straights. It's not too bad on the tyres, although we've got longer races this year, and it is a lot hotter than it's been so far this weekend. Uh, it's brakes that are more of an issue around this circuit because you've got a lot of long straights and then heavy braking down into chicanes. And of course, it's a chicane to start with, turn one. It's going to be a tight squeeze through the right and left of Valiente at uh, Retifilio. And then they accelerate up to top gear, seventh gear through Curve Grande. And flat out through there before they hit the next chicane again where it all tightens up. And then at the back of the circuit, there are some tricky corners where the exit is absolutely critical to get a good run up the straight. So the green flag is waved, ready for race three of the year. The first race of the weekend for the Formula Renault Euro Cup. Chris Hartley trackside to talk you through the action as the race gets underway. And he makes a good start from pole position. Lungard tucks in behind him. Max Futrell is going to line a stern as well, go third. And then everybody else looks like they've got off the line pretty well here. He knows it's going to be difficult. There's wheel bagging there between Futrell and Lungard. The two come together, the two Sport Academy drivers. Uh, will he be able to cut the corner and get back on the track there after going down the escape route? And also we've got another one off there on the uh, route out. That looks like, I'm afraid, Alex Peroni, or Max Deforni rather, uh, who had, uh, had a bit of contact as well and ran out wide. Meanwhile, Yee is coming under threat here as they go through Curve Grande. He's going to give everybody a massive toe. The toe is worth half a second a lap here at times. Lungard in second place. Futrell, the one that dropped back with the wheel banging incident. Colombo's made a good start. He's third. Then it's for sure running in fourth place in the orange and black machinery just behind. More action coming from Victor Martins in the number four car, another of the uh, bright yellow and black 
Renault Sport Academy drivers as he tries to work his way further up inside the top six. Frank Bird, I think, has lost a place or two in the number 24 car, the British driver, in his first weekend, first year of Formula Renault Euro Cup action. There he is in the 24 car, his teammate just ahead, and they are surrounding Max Futrell at the moment in the number one car, who had that incident with Christian Lungard. The two uh, know each other pretty well. So he's down to ninth place. He tucks in just behind Thomas Neubauer in the number 23 car. Uh, they can see the Red Bull livery car of an American driver who did pretty well last weekend. Scored two top 10 finishes, Neil Verhagen, as running out wide there is the 54 car of Christian Munox, one of the AVF team drivers run by uh, Andrew Valles, the ex-Formula 1 test driver. But he survives, and is there going to be a move here from Frank Bird? Is he going to lose a place, possibly, in the 24 car? He's got a tighter inside line, but you can carry speed around the outside. You've got to be careful on the exit, though, not to run too wide over the curbs of Parabolica as they come towards the end of the first lap of the race. He has held on to the lead from Lungard. Colombo with a very good start in third. Then, for sure, Martins and Smolia rounding out the top six there you can see them working their way through the order Smolly are weaving this way than that to try and find a way past for sure Smolly are in the red white and blue color scheme Smolly are didn't find a way through and now has to go a little bit defensive on the exit through Curva Grande and then they'll go down towards the third gear corner and drop down to around about 108 109 kilometers an hour for the next chicane some good overtaking opportunities on the brakes though but to Martins there in the number four car drawing alongside Smolly up but can't find a way through Charmeleze just behind I think holding on to his position position coming under attack from Alex Peroni whose teammate Max Deforni went wide and unfortunately out is the other Russian driver Alexander Vartanian he's pointing in the wrong direction the marshal's going to attend uh, his cars that's one of the Arden cars uh, the team run by Gary Horner, father of Christian Horner, the team set up to run Christian in Formula 3000 back in 1997 when he was competing against the likes of Juan Pablo Montoya. They've gone on to achieve huge success over the years in various international single-seater categories. Here's Neil Verhagen having a good battle with one of the Spanish drivers in the field there, another of the AVF drivers, uh, which is uh, Alicia Martinez. Martinez quite find his way through and now Smolia having another luck showing his nose again to try and find a way past for sure in this battle for uh, fourth place to Martins it was the one that was all over him and getting through and here they come out of parabolic you can see yellow flags waving and a safety car possibly about to be deployed keep an eye on that yes it is so the safety car coming out of the pit lane at the end of the second lap of racing to pick up the race leader Yiffy Yi, so a Chinese driver who hadn't got much of a lead anyway, is now going to have them all queued up behind him and their confirmation that the safety car has been deployed. Now, amongst the drivers that haven't come through is Max Futrell, the championship leader. So he didn't get any further than the second lap of the race there. You can see Vartanian's car, which is the Russian driver who we saw stopped out on circuit. And we've also lost another which I think yes is Naji Razak the Malaysian driver one of the drivers for the JD Motorsport team which is the only Italian team in the field so that can't be in which to wait there is uh, a newcomer this weekend Christian Hahn the Brazilian driver in the luminous yellow and black colour scheme there he joins uh, this weekend the Fortex squad Richard Dutton's all-conquering uh, team who've won so many uh, Formula Renault titles it's almost impossible to count so he has joined he's also con was concentrating this year on the Euro Formula Open Championship which is uh, for Formula 3 uh, level cars and that's the reason he wasn't with us at Paul Ricard last weekend because he was busy racing at uh, Estoril in Portugal so the uh, driver there having his first outing we're going to get a replay of the start there's the rear facing shot you can see them getting off the line nobody standing out as having a particularly good or bad start they're all Kind of held station certainly in the first three or four rows of the grid it's a long long run down towards uh, the corner and there the contact between Lungard and Futrell who was sent running off wide hit the marker board and then disappeared off down the escape route he did rejoin but I wonder if the damage sustained from that is what's caused him to go out or has he had another incident since then and then we saw uh, Max De Forney, the Belgian driver who's been one of the front runners in this championship for a few seasons now uh, being sent out wide as well and there was Smolliart 
trying but failing to get past for sure. And Martins then getting stuck in between them in the number four car. Look to Martins in the uh, one of the RH GP cars. Uh, there we saw in trouble Christian Munnutz as well. And we go back live to the cars. Still, despite the fact that it's 30 degrees, try to keep some heat in the tyres, ready for the restart. So he leading the way in his second season in the championship. One of the uh, drivers that's come back for a second, some of them in some cases even back for a third year in the championship. And he's a really amiable guy to talk to, very uh, switched on, very down to earth. You don't feel like you're talking to a 17-year-old as the green flag waves and the race gets back up to speed and how about that for a restart he's absolutely nailed that hasn't he nobody's going to pressurize him but there will be pressure for richard for sure here the dutch driver is going under uh, attack from alexander smolia going to try and run alongside him he's going to have the inside line watch for victor martins just behind as well lock up for the sure he can't stop the rushing from coming through and smolia gains fourth place so that was a nice restart by him for sure couldn't really do much about that. He was giving a huge toe to the Russian down the straight, and Smolia was uh, able to find a way through at the chicane. And now he's got to try and fend off others like Victor Martins, who is all over the back of him. Look, and he might have the inside line for the chicane now as well in the bright yellow number four car. No, he can't get through. Inside line covered. Richard for sure keeps the racing line and holds on just about to his fifth position. But again, Victor Martins showing his nose just behind then. It's Peroni having uh, a good race after a disappointing weekend last time out. The bright orange car, bright orange and blue with the yellow wing, wing rose just behind. 18-year-old from Tasmania. A couple of years ago, won the uh, French V de V Championship with uh, and a pretty astonishing 15 wins and 22 podiums. And at the time, at age 16, he was the youngest ever Australian to win an, a single-seater championship in Europe. So good to see Alex uh, having a good run here. Just behind him, the number three car of Charles Millesi, another of the RHGP squad, which run championship leader coming into this weekend, Max Futrell. So very frustrating for Max to be out so early on in the race. In fact, he's got going again, but he's down in 25th position, so right at the back of the field. Still on the lead lap, though, but it just depends how well the car is working, because Frank Bird here goes wheel to wheel with another Australian driver, Thomas Maxwell, in the green and white car. Maxwell runs out wide, and Frank Bird has got the position, and Neil Verhagen in the red ball livery car is going to try and get in on the action as well. Great racing here. The three of them are going to be neck and neck when they get down towards the chicane. Frank Bird in 11th place, just outside the points, top 10 score points. Neil Verhagen's going to get a double slip shot here, and the American is going to try and fire his way through further ahead. Richard Vashaw has a lock up there, goes straight on down the escape road, so he's going to lose at least one place. Victor Martins is uh, going to get through, and there is Thomas Maxwell just about fending off Verhagen. Verhagen, I thought, was going to get through because he got almost a double toe down towards the first she came, but it wasn't to be. So terrific battles going on all the way down to around about 15th, 16th place. So they weren't really spread out before the safety car, but they're even tight, more tightly bunched now. There is Vashaw, who has rejoined just in front of the three car of uh, Milesi. So lost a couple of positions. Remember, he was on the second row of the grid, but he lost you know, a reasonable amount of, uh, of good running in practice with this brake issue that he was having, the soft brake. Another one that uh, complained, well, not complained, but said he'd had issues with his brakes in the early part of the weekend and the test on Thursday was uh, Raul Guzman, one of the Mexican drivers. He had the opposite problem, rather than a, a soft, long pedal, the brakes kept locking up, so they, he was definitely struggling with that. After showing good pace, he didn't score points at Paul Ricard, but he looked like he was capable, well capable of running in the top ten. So he leads, Lungard in second, Colombo third, Smolly up to fourth place. Sure, having dropped a couple of positions just in front of Alex Peroni now, running in the top ten, looking for some good points, and years just edged away here. 151.4 last time around versus 151.7 for Lundgaard in second. So he's got the gap out to nearly a second now as Frank Bird goes wheel to wheel again here to try and hold on to position. This time it's with Arthur Rougier. And again, showing good pace here, Frank. These are difficult cars to learn. They're Pretty much every driver I spoke to over the last couple of weekends have told me that the Renault is a difficult car to master. Back end really does dance around. You have to be so careful. You have to almost drive it to the point where the back end is loose to get the most from it. But Frank is adapting well. Not been racing too long. Starting his career in the Ginetta Junior Championship. Frank Bird there behind Rougier. So he dropped one, but he has at least been able to fend off Thomas Maxwell, who was one of the drivers 
that made up the most places last weekend. He came from what was it, the 10th row of the grid to get up into the points in the first race of the weekend. He actually finished 11th on the road, but then got promoted later on. And he's going to get up the inside here as they go through Kermit Grande and Thomas Maxwell gains a place on Frank Bird as we cut forward to the battle between Richard Bashaw, number 12. Try to fend off Sean Milesi for sure down to seventh place now after that lockup at the end of the previous lap. Back to the battle between 62, Thomas Maxwell and number 24, Frank Bird, and Neil Verhagen just behind them as well. These three just outside the top 10, just outside the points. They'll be keen not to hold each other up too much because that may allow the top 10 uh, to get away. And a glance there of number two, Logan Sargent, winner last weekend, but with a lowly grip position. He's moving forward uh, slowly. So he's up to 14th now and only four places away from the top 10. The American driver who looked oh so comfortable having got the lead of the race last time out in round one. Uh, incidents to be investigated after the race between uh, Lovaras, number 51, number 63, uh, Razak, and number 42, Alexander Vartanian, uh, which put uh, those three cars out and brought out the safety car. That's future L still not gaining ground as Neil Verhagen has a look at the inside. These two American drivers running absolutely wheel to wheel here. Logan Sargent in the number two car, Neil Verhagen just behind. He pulled off some good moves last weekend at Paul Ricard as well on the circuit, which is much more difficult to overtake on than we have here at Monza. 17 year old from uh, New York.
partenza per Colombo, la quarta per Spogliare e poi via via gli altri protagonisti. Job, we have the interview. Congratulations, that was an absolutely dominant race. Yeah, it was. I did a good start and I managed to 
to uh, manage my tires, it was not easy at all. But uh, yeah, at the end we came home first and some good points for the championship. Yeah, the truck was getting uh, very, very tough to drive and yeah, but um, yeah, it was, good. it was good at the end. Great, thank you. Thank you.
Il vincitore, signori, Gianni! 